Hi friends, welcome to the channel. The goals of this channel are simple. Discuss books, movies, and TV shows that I perceive to be either underrated or in some cases, overhyped. The topic for this video is the 1930s motion picture Cavalcade. This is my take on the cinematography and the relevance of a nearly 90 year old film, so if you haven't already seen it, I highly recommend that you check it out if you're generally interested in either best picture winners decided by the Academy or old fashioned films. At the end of the video, please leave your thoughts and constructive criticisms in the comments below to further discuss your thoughts on the film. Cavalcade follows the lives of two English families during the early years of the 20th century. If you're relatively familiar with European history, many of the events in the film won't be a surprise to you. Otherwise, prepare for some light spoilers. Before we get into the plot summary, here are some facts about the film for all you cinephiles. Cavalcade was directed by Frank Lloyd and released in 1933. The film stars Clive Brook and Diana Winyard as Mr. and Mrs. Marriott, as well as Herbert Munden and Una O'Connor as Mr. and Mrs. Bridges. Cavalcade was nominated for four Academy Awards and won for Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Production Design. Among the films nominated for Best Picture for the 1932-1933 Academy Awards year were the films 42nd Street, A Farewell to Arms, and Little Women. Cavalcade has a rating of 5.8 on IMDb, but is actually much closer to a 6.5 in my humble opinion. I recommend this film to anyone who wants to commiserate the sorrows of the human existence. Fans of exclusively fast-paced action-adventure movies with high-speed car chases and explosions are excused from watching. Following the title sequence, the film begins with the Marriott couple, returning to their townhouse in London to toast to the new year at midnight. Although Robert Marriott is due to serve in the Second Boer War, Robert and his wife look to the future with hope, as do their servants. Their butler, Alfred Bridges, has similarly volunteered to serve the British Army in the war, much to his wife's dismay. As the clock strikes midnight announcing the new year, people of all classes are shown singing, dancing, and celebrating not only the new year, but the turn of the century. The excitement and pure joy of the Londoners on the street was so great, I had to pause the movie as I was overcome with emotion. Now, normally I would have watched a scene like this and not given it much of a second thought. However, watching this scene about two to three months into quarantine, I couldn't help but draw comparisons to my own life in 2020. The majority of the aspirations I had coming into the new decade were all taken away a quarter of the way into the year. A running theme I came to discover from this film was how we as individuals deal with the unfulfilled hopes and the relentlessness of reality, something that unfortunately continues to be the case in 2021 or in whatever year you're listening to this. Back in 1900 London, an emotional farewell at the dock sends Mr. Marriott and Mr. Bridges away to war, only for both men to return safely to England a year later. Mr. Bridges tells his family that he has bought a pub and that the family would be moving to an apartment, concluding their services to the Marriotts. Before the two families can properly celebrate this new chapter in their lives, the news of the Queen's death calls for solemnity across Great Britain. Fast forwarding a few years into the future, Mr. Bridges has developed a drinking problem and has fallen behind on rent. After drunkenly embarrassing himself in front of the Marriotts one evening, Alfred breaks his daughter's doll, causing her to run out onto the street where tragedy occurs. The film then follows a pattern of portraying the lives of two families, presenting a significant moment in history, and depicting how such historical moments impact the two families before fast forwarding through time to the next historical moment, such as World War I further on into the film, all the way up into the year 1933. Not only is Cavalcade an emotional depiction of the historical events from the early 1900s, it also shows the hopes and heartaches of two early 20th century families from differing social backgrounds. Additionally, the reality of this film hits differently considering the horrors of war and the loss that would occur in decades to come. The only hope we have in times of struggle is the knowledge that there will always be more struggles to come. Despite this seriously discouraging analysis of the film, I try to remind myself to refer back to the critical scene towards the start of the film of the Londoners celebrating the start of the new century to draw optimism from. Choosing Cavalcade as the title of the film could be referencing the cavalcade for the procession of Queen Victoria's death in 1901, or it could be representative of the unending procession of time, causing important current events to become notable historical markers for humanity to reference in the future. Cavalcade is a severely underrated film that deserves more appreciation in cinematic history. If you know anyone who has been dealing with the effects of 2020, consider offering this film as a suggestion to help them vent their grievances and frustrations on what appeared to be a hopeless year. Like and subscribe if you want. Okay, bye.